Hello, everyone. Hi. Hello. Um, we have Fred from South Africa coming from Novopolsk. He's probably just getting off the bus right now, so he'll be joining me real soon. But uh, I'm going to start. We're talking about Africa today. Does anyone, has anyone been to Africa? No. No. Egypt? Yes. Okay. Yes? Did you forget? Where, you were in Egypt too? Yes. Yes? Yes. Egypt as well? Yep. All right. See? Don't forget, Egypt is also in Africa. Well done. <laughs> uh, the rest of you, have, do you know anyone who's been to Africa? Maybe? No. Huh? You can raise your hand. You don't need <laughs> I, I was in Africa. I was in Africa in 2015 on my journey around the world. And um, I was in one, two, I was in Zambia, Botswana, uh, Zimbabwe for about five minutes, and, <laughs> and then South Africa. And uh, so I'm really excited for Trust to come. That's his, his name. Uh, he's a student in Novopolovsk. He'll be here and we'll talk about South Africa with me. We had another friend from Nigeria uh, who could not make it, also a student in uh, Novopolotsk. But we'll get going, and I will start off with, um, with Zambia and Botswana, and a little bit about South Africa, and then Trust will take it from there. Um, I'll touch a little bit on Nigeria. There is one Kahoot question from there, so uh, I'll make sure you know that. I know you're in, uh, <laughs> really uh, um, <laughs> excited about that, that one. Well, that's why you <laughs> yes, I actually I bought this actually in South Africa, uh, in the same city that Sovieto, where um, Nelson Mandela used to live. Who knows Nelson Mandela? Who's heard of Nelson Mandela? Yes. Okay. Mostly the older crew, but I'm glad to see that uh, people here do know Nelson Mandela. He's by far uh, the most important person in modern history from South Africa. Excuse me as I check this periodically because I'm just trying to make sure he's getting here all right. So, I'll start with Zambia. This is the Zambia flag. Um, <laughs> and uh, Zambia is located in the southern region of the African continent. The countries that we're talking about other than Nigeria are Zambia, Botswana, and South Africa. Basically, these countries in southern uh, Africa, so to say. Uh, Zambia's capital is Lusaka. And my experience in, uh, in Zambia was mostly down here in Livingston. Now, you see a lot of countries actually border Zambia. You've got Angola, you've got Namibia, you've got Botswana by a small, like, 300-meter section. Uh, you'll see that later in a little video. Zimbabwe. Mozambique, Malawi, Tanz and Tanzania, Congo, and um, but my experience was mostly down here because there's a there's a, a natural wonder of the world down here. Who knows what that is? Yes. Waterfall Victoria. Yes, Victoria Waterfalls. That's right. That's actually the view of that. Uh, Zambia itself has 16 and a half million people. It's the 69th largest country in the world. So relatively middle ground, we could say, about the middle for country populations. Uh, I traveled through, Zamb uh, through Zambia uh, with these two German uh, missionaries, actually, who I met. And uh, these were some local guys that we met along the way, right uh, next to Victoria Waterfalls. Do you know why it's called Victoria Waterfalls? Victoria Falls. After Queen Victoria. After Queen Victoria. I like that you think it was a, it was because of the Americans, well, but it was not. <laughs> well, actually, it's named. It's called uh, the name of the Queen Victoria. True. There were another. It's Lake Victoria. Yeah. Waterfall Victoria. Many. Yeah, many things were named after her. Yeah, is uh, Victorian. Mm-hmm. And, and what did you want to say? There were some changes in. I remember that there is one landmark in Africa which changed its name because. Mm -hmm. Of Americas. Well, I, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> That's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know, but I wouldn't be surprised. It was actually, it was by um, Livingston, but we'll get to that to a second. Here's a picture of Lusaka, uh, the capital. Does that look like Africa like you imagine? Mm -hmm. Cer certainly not like that photo that was put on Contactia and Facebook by the Polotsk USA page. Um, that's, yeah, but there are many cities in Africa that look like that. Um, yeah, uh, that looks like a 
any city you may find in uh, Eurasia, actually. So uh, that is Lusaka, the capital. The size of uh, Zambia is about three and a half times the size of Belarus. So it is a large country. Africa itself is a humongous continent. And the way that maps are made to look on a, on a flat 2D plane, it actually puts out of perspective how big that continent actually is. There's a video online. If you look on YouTube, maps have always lied to you. If you look at that, it compares sizes of continents and you see that when things are put into a, it's impossible to put the globe on a piece of paper accurately. So Africa is actually massive. So like I said, we're down here in Livingston. Livingston, why, Livingston, why the name? The name Livingston comes after David Livingston. <laughs> and he was the first European to discover Victoria Falls, of course. And it was in 1855, of course. Many people had already seen and worshipped or swam in Victoria Falls previous to that, but through European exploration of the southern part of the African continent, he was the first claimed to a uh, European claim to have seen Victoria Falls. And uh, he named it after Queen Victoria, and the neighboring city in Zambia is now named after him, Livingston, Zambia, for David Livingston. And uh, there's actually a, a town called Victoria Falls in Zimbabwe across the border. So yes, Victoria Falls was named after Queen Victoria of, Brit of, of Great Britain. And um, the city of Livingston, Zambia was named after this good-looking fellow, Mr. David, Mr. David Livingston. So, Victoria Falls. Uh, it's difficult <coughs> to actually capture Victoria Falls in one picture because the falls themselves are so wide. It's one of the widest waterfalls in the world. Some claim it to be the largest waterfall in the world when you look at the width and the height. It's not the tallest. We'll see that later. But you see here, how, other than from the sky, there's almost no point where you can stand and actually see the whole waterfall. It's massive. This is the Zambezi River that comes down here. And after this point, it then corkscrews or meanders through a path like a snake, kind of. But it all drops off this cliff, this edge right here. And you can see, uh, you see the rainbow there is constantly there, 24-7, or, well, when it's sunny outside. And um, the actual... This is this, this cloud, it's not a cloud, but rather that's the water that has fallen from the waterfall, hit, and come back up. And it's such a weird phenomenon being next to this and being under this cloud because it feels like it's raining. You saw this photo with, with me here at the beginning. It is pouring, it's, it's, we have trench coats on because it's It's not actually raining, it's a sunny day. Well, it, well it's like they're, they're foggy. It, well, it's, it's actually not fog. It's, it's purely just the water has fallen off the waterfall, hit, and it's fallen so hard that it bounced back up, and then it comes down again. That's, it's such a weird phenomenon that it's actually always raining on you. And this bridge right here actually connects two countries. Does anyone know what two countries those are? That's fine. Nope. Close. It's Zambia, which is on this side, and Zimbabwe. And so I actually, hmm, I crossed, the border is actually right there, like the line is in the middle of that bridge. And so you can walk right over, you can walk across the bridge and you cross the line and you're in Zimbabwe. Go back, you're in Zambia. The actual border crossing with the passport stamps and everything is right down here, right at this station right here. And so I walked that half a kilometer to that point just to go across the border, get the stamp, took a picture, and then came back. So I was in Z Zimbabwe for five minutes. Uh, but the, the actual waterfalls themselves are nearly impossible to capture in one photo. You see the Zambezi River, it is huge. It comes down here through, through Africa, in the south of Africa, and through many different countries. And then at this point right here, you see there's the falls. That's the drop-off point, the where it all crashes. And after that, that huge river then meanders, kind of like a serpentine, further on. And then this is actually the border between Zambia and Zimbabwe. Boom. 
this is a Livingston. Uh, this is the Victoria Falls uh, on, in the Zimbabwe side, and then up here the road, boom, is is Livingston where I stayed. So there you see, that's that magnificent, magnificent view from above that you really can only get from above. I it was like for 15 minutes it was like 150 dollars. Uh, to go in a helicopter. Uh, so I, I did not see that from above uh, personally, but uh, yeah. There's a point now here at Victoria Waterfalls, right up here, right on the edge, called Devil's Pool. And this is a point where there's a pool of water that's really calm, and you can actually swim in this pool right on the edge of this waterfall. <laughs> Can you imagine? Well, someone tries to jump into the waterfall. Well, you actually jump into the pool, and it. Uh, oh, I did not connect my speaker. It looks like this. Um, I had seen this before going to Zambia, <laughs> and I very much wanted to to try this. I thought that like that's the the cliff. I mean that that's it. That's death after that point. Um, but I thought okay. Every day tourists are doing this. I can't do, you know, like, it will be all right. Um, but unfortunately, when I was there, uh, the water levels were too high. And so they said, no, it's too dangerous, you cannot do it. And uh, from a very, it's a very poor country, and, and the people there want to make money. And it, it's also very, it's like, it's also like $100 to go on that excursion to get to that point. It's, it's Africa, it's a poor country, but the touristic things are very, very expensive. And um, yeah, and so I realized, okay, yeah, they definitely, they're really big about getting as much, as many dollars, touristic dollars as they can. And if they're saying, no, we don't want to take your hundred dollars because the water's too high, then the water really must be too high and it really must be too dangerous. So um, I did not get to do that, unfortunately, but um, I will connect this, uh, I'll connect our little um, speaker here and you can see what this experience is like. Do you Oh, brilliant. Do what not to do. Then he jumped into the falls. Less than a meter before plummeting to his death, he sat on what's called the devil's armchair. The other guides defied death to get into their safety positions, while Omega reassured us that no one would be doing the no rope bungee jump. The no rope bungee jump. No one would do that. Then, it was our turn. We'd been up in a helicopter and seen the falls from afar, but this was definitely the most exciting way to experience the falls, actually getting in them. Not many people can say they've seen Victoria Falls, and very few people can Who say they've seen Who wants this guy's job? Who stands there at the edge? <laughs> <laughs> so this is called the, the Devil's Pool. Um, that was a rem that, and um, unfortunately, I did not get to do that. I hope to go back one one day and do that uh, if my if it allows me, my life allows me to. Um, my life, not my wife, I don't have a wife. <laughs> but um, when we look at Victoria Falls in comparison to other majors, or the other largest waterfalls in the world, uh, for example, Niagara Falls. Where's Niagara Falls? In the United States. That's right. That's Canada border. That's right. In fact, all three of these major waterfalls border, border two countries. So this is the U.S. Canadian border. Which border is this? Victoria Falls? Well, let's see. <laughs> Iguazu Falls. Who knows what, what two countries are at that border? South America. Yes, it's in South America. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Brazil is one of them. Someone said that. What other country? No, so close. Uh, no. <laughs> it's close. Paraguay and Uruguay. It's right down there. The next one. Argentina. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear. Um, so, 
Um, this, we look at the different sizes here. I highlighted in red the um, height in meters and the width in meters. The red figures are actually meters. These are in, uh, in feet, a funny system that we use in the United States. Uh, but <laughs> uh, if you look at the height, um, uh, Victoria Falls in, in, in meters for height is actually the, the tallest of these three. Um, it's, there are taller waterfalls, but none of them are even close to as wide. So of the major ones, it is the tallest. Um, but the Iguazu Falls, how did you say it? You said it very well. Iguazu. Iguazu, thank you. Uh, no habla espanol. No, um, <laughs> but you can see it's a whole kilometer wider. It's a whole kilometer wider than the Victoria Falls. And the Victoria Falls, we already saw, it's massive, but it's not that high. It's only, in parts, it's only half as, half as high as the uh, Victoria Falls. Uh, so many claim that Victoria Falls, because of its height and its width, that it is the largest waterfall in the world, but that is, of course, up to interpretation. So, while I was in Zambia, I also had the chance to go over into Botswana. There was a, a safari tour into Botswana. Botswana is located right next to Zambia right here. That's Zimbabwe. So, Botswana is located right next to it. There's a small little border across the, uh, the river that I was able to cross. Here's our guest. Come on in, my friend. Front row. We got him. I can present faster now. I don't have to stall. <laughs> no, man, man, these are for you, bro. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, man. Man, I look more African than you today. What's up? My pants are torn. So good. Good to see you. Thank you for being here. All right. My friend, this is, this is Trust. He's from South Africa. And he will be presenting. Uh, it's about South Africa. And I'm going to knock out Botswana, and then we'll go further. Help yourself to the water, but please sit on front uh, front row guest for us today. You just missed Zambia and uh, Victoria Waterfalls, but other than that, okay. you're right on time. And so we look at Botswana. I crossed the border here from Zambia, came across the border, and went to Chobe National Park in the north. Uh, you're going to hear about this delta as well. And um, in Botswana, this, the whole country only has 2.2 million people. Neighboring Zambia had 16 million something. Botswana, only 2.2 million. That's like Minsk, the whole country. So it's 141st in population, but in square kilometers, it's half a million. It's 48th. It's, it's a large country. It's more than two times. It's about two times. Two times as, yeah. Uh, Two times the size of Belarus, um, but only two, two times the size of Belarus, but only Minsk. Imagine. A lot of unpopulated unpo area in Botswana. So, there is a great YouTube channel by this guy. Uh, it's called Geography Now. And I'm going to play a short little clip from this. And if you like geography, you like traveling, I highly recommend you look at this channel called Geography Now. And he's doing every country in the world alphabetically, A through Z and giving a 10-minute video that describes the geography and the political situation of that country. He's right now, I think he's on Kenya or, or Ghana. He's, he's about a third of the way through. But uh, you'll see a little introduction about Botswana from his video. I think he describes it perfectly. And when he talks about that border from Zambia, that small little, like, small little border, that's actually where I crossed. So, Bing, enjoy. Bing. Welcome to Diamond Town, Africa. It's time to learn geography now! Hey everybody, I'm your host Paul Barbato. If there was ever an African comeback kid, Botswana would definitely fit that title. But first, you know the drill, let's dissect the flag. The flag is pretty simple. It has a blue field cut horizontally by a black stripe with a white frame. The blue represents water, or more specifically rain, as it is a precious resource the country relies on and sustains life of the country. The black and white frame also has two meanings, the first one being that Botswana is a country of diverse cooperation between people of different races that work in harmony, and the second that it represents the stripes of a zebra. Easy. Moving on. <laughs> Botswana's location is kind of serendipitous in that for the longest time, they didn't even realize that they were sitting on buried treasure. First of all, Botswana is located in the southern area of the African continent, about the same size as France, and is bordered by four other countries. Looking at the map, you would think Botswana is only bordered by Namibia, South Africa, and Zimbabwe, but if you look very close at the northeastern tip where the Chobe River meets the Zambezi, you see the Zambezi Quadra Point, in which all four countries meet. This spot has the ever-so-narrowest of borders, only a few dozen meters wide, that Botswana 
Botswana has with Zambia on the Zambezi River. This area is right on the A33 road that takes you to the Kazungula Ferry, the only place in all of Botswana that gives you access to Zambia directly from Botswana. This is also the only part of Botswana that touches the world famous Zambezi River, which has been historically used for centuries for navigating across the African savannas. It's kind of funny though, because when drawing the borders, they probably could have taken more, but Namibia was like, oh, hell no, I'm gonna go get me some of that Zambezi, y'all. Look at me, I got this dry skeleton coast. I needs my hydrations. Botswana's capital and largest city is Gaborone. If you speak Setswana, it's pronounced Gaborone. Located close to the border of South Africa, and the country is divided into nine districts. With the exception of Namibia's straight and quite frankly very distinct and noticeably well-marked border with Botswana, the Caprivi Strip, most of the borders are rivers, like the Chobe, Limpopo, the Shashe, which by the way, in the very east, Zimbabwe was like, look, I know we're using this river as a border, but I'm just gonna draw a radius around the station of Thule, and everything in that circle is mine to use as a wildlife reserve, even if it does cross the river. Oh, 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 okay, a wildlife reserve. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, you can have it, Zimbabwe. Otherwise, Botswana is pretty open and free. As the third least densely populated country in Africa, it's a haven for nature and safari enthusiasts. Ooh, good opportunity to transition. Botswana doesn't just have a bunch of open land, but also a bunch of exceptionally unique land unlike anywhere else in Africa. First off, the country is generally flat, and about 70% of the country is dominated by the semi-arid Kalahari Desert and dry savannas, especially in the west part of the country, whereas the east and the north parts are generally greener. In the far north and the northwest district, you have one of the strangest natural phenomena, the Okavango Delta. Now, if you've heard of this place, contrary to what you may have been told, this is not actually the world's largest inland delta. There are two others that pass it in Mali, and Sudan. However, this world-renowned UNESCO heritage site sticks out because of the way how the delta operates. Basically, the Okavango River meanders into geological faults that, in response, spread the waters out into a vast network of channels, creeks, and wetlands. Now, here's the thing. Every year, rainwater from the highlands of Angola come down and surge into the Okavango, causing the entire flood basin to swell up to three times its permanent size between March and June. For the next few months, the entire area becomes this weird, shallow, swampy wetland with an abundance of wildlife that flourishes in it. In fact, one of the strangest things about this area is that it is one of the few places where you will find animals that, contrary to their cousins in the other areas, have completely adapted to the hydrated landscape. You can see swimming cheetahs, lions, and even hyenas fully acclimated to the conditions that surround them. Nothing is scarier than knowing that a cheetah can swim after you. So, he says that this <laughs> delta floods then in uh, March until June. I was there in the middle of that in April. And um, these are some of the sites that I was uh, able to see in this uh, Chobe National Park. And uh, it, is, it is impressive <laughs> because the delta, it does cover everywhere. So you have this almost desert land and then just vast areas of water where I never thought really much of elephants being in water, but um, saw elephants completely playing, playing, swimming around, playing in the water. Some of them were even, even having sex in the water. And it was, it was, I never thought about that, uh, swimming elephants. But um, like, uh, like Barbie, the, the host of that show said, um, the, uh, the animals there, it doesn't matter if it's a cheetah or an ostrich, they totally adapt to the uh, physical conditions of, of, uh, of that delta. And it's, everything's there. There's, there's giraffes, there's elephants. There's rhinos, and see, you can take uh, a boat out onto the delta and, uh, and even see all the animals in the water. So, um, yeah, it was the only safari I've ever been on in my life, like true African safari. We have some wildlife refuge, refuges in the United States that try to create these conditions, but truly being in the middle of a country with so few people, 2.2 million, two and a half times the size of Belarus, 2.2 million, and so many wild animals that you'd only ever seen in like the Lion King, you know? Um, for me, that was a true African experience that, uh, that I will never forget in, uh, in Chobe National Park. You know, female lion and, 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 and uh, yeah, hyenas. Has anyone ever seen a hyena in the zoo maybe? Yes. Uh, yeah? Not only in the Lion King. This is cute. Watch it that fall over. Boom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, that was that was uh, that was Botswana. Basically, my experience in Botswana was in Chobe National Park. And now we move on to Republic of South Africa. Um, south Africa, the very tip of the African continent, in the very south. Um, our our guest here is from Pretoria. Is that correct? Yeah. 
Um, and uh, I was lucky enough to be in Johannesburg, not in Pretoria, but uh, also Cape Town. And uh, we look at South Africa, it's got 55 million people. It's a lot more than the 2 million to the north. It's 57. 57 now? Yeah. Really? It's growing. Yeah. You got to Wikipedia to update their stuff. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get the next person. Yep. And is this, is, has it grown in physical uh, <laughs> size too? Uh, have they been conquering uh, 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 no. Botswana? No. Although no, no, uh, we outsource some of our water from Lesotho. Which okay. Is, which is a country in our country. And that's very interesting, I think, from South Africa, is that there's two countries, basically, or kind of two, two and a half, or one and a half, yeah. that are inside the borders of, of Africa. Yeah. Can you explain that a little bit? Like, what, what is the deal with Lesotho? I think uh, it was uh, an agreement with uh, the British. Uh, Lesotho are actually, in general, they're South African. However, it's sort of like a, um, uh, an empire on its own. Okay. Yeah. So they have a king also, uh, and a prime minister. So uh, it, it really baffles me also as to why it was chosen to be a country and not a state like in, in, in our country, like any other province. So now, does... It's quite strange. Is the economic situation in Lesotho, I, I would guess then, in that it's lower than the rest of South Africa? Yeah, it is. Because South Africa has a lot of natural resources, mm -hmm. which we'll also see well, later. Uh, Lesotho has uh, diamonds also, but um, their economic situation, as you say, maybe because they're a small country and most of them actually work in South Africa. So, okay. Yeah. So it's not that uh, as, as huge as, as South Africa. Actually, my host in South Africa was born in Lesotho, oh, yeah. the one in Davyton, mm -hmm. that you saw some of those videos from, yeah. and I will, I will show some of those here too, shortly. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I had never heard of Lesotho before going there, and it, was, it, was, it still baffles me too. And then Swaziland too, do you, do you know what the history with that is at all? Oh, well, Swaz Swaziland is uh, sort of like a Nguni section, it, Zulu and Swati, they're not much different. So I think uh, it's it's uh, it's also uh, its own country because mm -hmm. um, the British were were never interested in South Africa, including the Dutch. So um, they they retain uh, a kingdom also. They are a monarch, and uh, they use they they use different money from us. Uh -huh. However, most of their citizens also live in South Africa. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I, I would look forward to the Geography Now episode on South Africa because you could see that guy likes these kind of border, yeah. like, uh, weird border well, arrangements. Bilateral situations are good. With between, both? With, yeah, with both countries. Okay. So, yeah. It's just the borders and um, the high uh, unemployment rates in our country. That, that's, those are the only restrictions, I guess. Do you have strict border controls? Yeah. Between those countries? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, what I found was interesting is that 57, so it's probably, it might be 24th now actually in the world for population size, and it was basically the same, if not the same, for physical geography. Usually we find, I've been doing this for a few different countries, and it's like, okay, 161st in, uh, in size, but then it's like 42nd uh, in uh, population. But basically, uh, Africa, is, or South Africa, is uh, uh, about 24th in the world for size and population. Does anyone know what city this is? Yes, okay, good <laughs> job. They know some stuff already. Um, would you want to talk about Nelson Mandela? I think you have a much more personal, uh, uh, sh share with them, please, I mean. Um, he was uh, a political activist in prison for 27 years uh, during apartheid, apartheid, if you would apartheid. like to call it. And uh, he, was a, he's, he was our first uh, democratic president. Um, he's, he's also well known for, um, uh, he's a, a Nobel laureate also. And uh, after, after apartheid was abolished in 1990, he was released, I think, yeah. And um, he went on to, liberate the country, but not single-handedly. He was just made, be, made an icon, I think, uh, as, as big as, uh, because uh, 
of media mostly, but he played a huge role in negotiating uh, the stability and uh, so that like foreign investment doesn't go out of the country after uh, uh, apartheid was uh, abolished. And uh, in general, he, he was a, he was a good-hearted man, I, I should think, because in in most countries, African countries generally, after after colonization and uh, uh, after uh, the native people get back their freedom, um, mostly the uh, the colonial uh, people, uh, Europeans, they move out of the country. So we've managed to live amongst the the, the, the former uh, regime and uh, just bring peace to the country right now. So that's why the country is stable. We have um, nine languages. Yeah, we have uh, white people living in the country peacefully. So we we actually do relate. Yeah. So that's what Mandela is known for, for keeping peace even after, for, I think, 40, 50 years or so of uh, oppression. Yeah. Can you, uh, how, how many years was he in prison? Oh yeah, uh, 27 years. Can you imagine 27 years in prison mm -hmm. and not to have any hate or anger for the yeah. people that put you in prison? Yeah, yeah. That speaks a lot to his it does. philosophy. Uh, and yeah, it, it actually uh, also changed our way of thinking uh, towards uh, uh, certain people, no racism and all that stuff. So racism, it, it's still there. There are people who are extremist in, in every country, you know. But it, it made us uh, have a bigger view of the world and uh, we were able to forgive for whatever that, that's been done to the country and so forth. Beautiful. So when I asked who knows Nelson Mandela at the beginning, uh, I think just most of the teachers and two students raised their hands. So I, I'm glad that everyone can leave today uh, knowing Nel who Nelson Mandela is and his role in South Africa. We will touch on him a little bit more as well. You talked a little bit about this, about what the apartheid was like. Mm -hmm. um, these were just some pictures that I found from what you provided me and online. Mm -hmm. But like this one, uh, non-whites uh, this way, exit the subway this way, whites exit mm -hmm. this way. We had the same thing in America, you know, even mm -hmm. in, in, up until the 1960s. Yeah. And, uh, and in South Africa up until 1990 or mm -hmm. so. Um, yeah, uh, I, and this one, this picture in the bottom, I believe, is a museum. Is a museum to oh yeah, to mm -hmm. uh, But I like this. We bleed the same color and and whatnot. Um, wh what can you tell us about the colonization of, of South Africa? It was colonized by the Dutch. Is it, is it, is no, no, by the British. By the British. Yeah. There was the Africans. Like, I, yeah, but they were not uh, colonialists. Okay. Uh, they, they were actually settlers. Yeah. And uh, they started mining. We, they had an agreement with the natives, but uh, until it, it, it wasn't until 1948. Apartheid started in 1948, and when the British came. But prior to that, we had what we call the Anglo Boer War between the British and the the, the Dutch. They were fighting for uh, territory also. Uh, as to who will gain what most. And then at the end, the, the British won. And after the British won, uh, the Dutch, seeing that they were on the losing side, they just pleaded that, okay, they should be given more preference uh, than the natives of South Africa. And that's when apartheid started. So people would uh, as black people would not be allowed into cities. Uh, you, they'd have to um, show uh, passes whether they, they are employed within the city or not, and so forth. So a lot of people died. I, I remember when I was a child, um, about four or five years, we'd get uh, like police raids. So if, my father was also a revolutionary. So one day they came looking for him and uh, we would have to hide under beds so that the police don't come in. But if they wanted him seriously, they'd just uh, bash the door open and uh, do whatever they want, search it. But a lot of people died, especially in 1976 when the youth uh, started re uh, revolting against the system. 
um, students didn't go to work, uh, I mean, they didn't go to school for uh, that day, it was June 16th. But over 300, 300 were killed in one day. So it, it was not good during the apartheid times. But uh, we've learned from it, and I think uh, it, it won't happen again. Uh, it, it, it gives us a, a position in, in Africa in general. Our, pres our presidents, they, they serve as mediators between fighting cultures and so forth. Yeah. Very beautifully said. And, and what I saw too, being there, was I was, wow, like, I was very optimistic for the future of South Africa. Yeah. How I saw that, okay, you know, blacks and whites are working together mm -hmm. and uh, it completely moved forward from yeah. 20, it was 24 years ago since I was there. I saw you sent me some pictures of the, of the Kohai. Who, who, who are they? Oh, the Koi. Koi. Um, quite recently, I think 2013, if you're interested in anthropology, um, the oldest uh, humanoid was found there. Uh, the Homo sapien, or they call it Homo naledi, uh, Australopithecus africanus, if, if I may say. So the Khoi were amongst the, I think they're the first people, the Pygmies. They, they, they have the oldest civilization in South Africa. They, the, they are the indigenous people of South Africa. They could survive on, in desert lands, as he was showing close to the Kalahari. But what, what, what is so strange about the Khoi is that their, their culture is not really recognized. Their language is not even officiated in South Africa. So I'm, I'm actually a, an activist of the Khoi Santu for, for them to get what is rightfully theirs in South Africa also. They're the indigenous people of South Africa, the Khoi Santu. Yeah. These are some historic cave paintings? Yeah. yeah. Um, the, these paintings are over 200,000 years old, I think. Yeah. So uh, when visiting South Africa or if you tour, uh, that would be interesting for you to see that um, there was art 200,000 years ago, yeah. Um, you said a little bit about the languages. I saw too in South Africa, there's so many different languages. And this, yeah. uh, this diagram says that Zulu is the most popular. Yeah. And, and, and then, all right, well, can you speak about all the different kinds of languages that you've got in South Africa? How does that work? How do people communicate to each other? So someone from Davidson and someone from, from uh, uh, Cape Town, how, how are they going to communicate? Well, most, most uh, citizens, like people that were born there, we learn to learn other languages. For instance, um, I'm, I'm Zulu, uh, but I, I didn't speak Zulu until I was about 16, 17, because the city I was from was not a Zulu-speaking city, you know. Uh, Pretoria is mostly Setswana or Sepedi. So as you, as you move around and meet new friends, at school I had Zulu friends, so that's how I, I had to learn other languages. But as a child, having been exposed to so many languages, you pick up on it, but um, you, you get to learn as you grow. I can safely say I can speak about seven of those languages. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. That's fascinating. Um, and so this kind of divides where these different languages are, are spoken then? And so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Different regions mm -hmm. um, of South Africa. Do you, um, do, you, do you remember what language those videos from that wedding that I had read? Are those in Zulu? They were different languages. Yeah. But I, I saw the, the attire. Yeah. It's in Debele. Okay. Yeah. I was so, sure. So in, in, in Debele is part of Nguni. Nguni is um, uh, the mother tongue mm -hmm. of different languages, mm -hmm. which is Zulu, Tosa, Siswati, and Debele. Uh, and uh, it's uh, Shetonga. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, down there in the bottom. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, does, does anyone remember from the wedding ceremonies presentation? Who, who saw the, the, the South African uh, uh, dancing from the wedding ceremonies? 
Does anyone else remember that? A few? Okay, I, I will show a little short clip of that for those who have not seen that. Um, but when I was in South Africa, I had the unique opportunity to be a part of, 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 one, of one of these, of a, of a wedding in a township where uh, the, the, the black people were forced to live in the time of apartheid. And uh, I'll be honest, I did not see another white person for the five days I was in Davidson. Yeah, because uh, Davidson is an area that was located only for black people during, yeah. during apartheid. I, it's, but I, 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 I gotta tell you, even with that, I was so positively welcome there. Like they just saw, whoa, some foreigner is in Davidson. And it pulled me off the street to be in this wedding. And it's like, I'm in shorts. I never planned to be in a wedding that day. You know what I mean? Um, but this attire, you recognize this attire you said, yeah? Yeah, it's in the belly. In the belly. Yeah, the belly. They, they have quite nice art. Actually, this year's uh, BMW 7 Series, uh, there's, there's uh, the interior. Yeah, was was designed uh, from their their art. Wow. Yeah. So like their patterns and colors. Their pattern. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Um, oh, this was such a cool experience, and my favorite part was how afterwards that they uh, they then they paraded through the whole city, the whole basically the whole township yeah. neighborhood, dancing and singing. There's no DJ. There was just all from the soul and from the heart. And I tried to dance with them, but I couldn't get the beat. <laughs> I couldn't get the same beat. I was way off. You can see I stuck out like a sore thumb there, you know, I'm like half a meter taller than everyone and and <laughs> Sunburnt from the safari in Botswana. No musical instruments. None at all. It was so impressive. It's like a charm. Yeah, it was. It was. It was, it was a chant. Oh. So we'll get back to the, um, <laughs> this presentation. But, uh, yeah, the first time I met Trust, I saw him, and I'm like, you're from South Africa. Man, I got something you're not going to believe. And I showed him, I showed him that video. Um, so we talked a little bit about the resources. Um, what, what kind of, I mean, do you want to say anything about the, the resources in South Africa? What they're yeah, rich well, in? That's what South Africa is actually transforming right now. Because uh, in 1994, uh, after the democratic elections, we we just had political freedom, though the the, the resources still were in the, the hands of the former co colony, just for for so that the country did not collapse. You understand? So right now there's a transformation of resources and uh, uh, natural natural resources. Mining, the mining industry mostly because we do have copper, um, we have uh, nuclear energy, uh, uh, gold, platinum. So the, the companies that existed then are only being phased out now because as, as, as our, our leaders thought that, okay, fine, we, we take the country back, but we will not have the skill to manage what's in the country at that time. So this 20 year period was so that we could learn how to manage the mines and uh, process our own gold and so forth because the gold that's that's mined in South Africa is actually processed in Britain and brought back to us at 10 times the amount you understand so right now that that's what we're transforming so that also the, the mineral resources can belong it within the country the diamond on uh, Queen Elizabeth's uh, crown is from South Africa so most of the, the uh, gold deposits in Britain belong to South Africa. So that's, that's what the, the country is transforming to right now. I think South Africa, like you said, is doing a great job of keeping 
the foreign the investment foreign, yeah. inside the country yeah. and they're prospering economically mm -hmm. because of that. Yeah. When I was in these other countries up here, Zambia, Botswana, I interviewed guys and I asked them, what's your greatest goal for your life? And almost everyone said, if I could make enough money to move my family to South Africa, mm -hmm. then I will have been successful in my life yeah. because they saw, okay, that's where the, uh, the, the the future economically was much yeah. more than in Zambia or uh, well Botswana is coming around though as well I think that they're also doing very well yeah, um, with diamond with diamond yeah. yeah but their population is uh, minimal two million <laughs> yeah so that's why I think uh, you, there is no poverty there mm -hmm. as opposed to our fifty seven million yeah and uh, uh, we we're transforming it's only been twenty years since yeah. apartheid was abolished so. A lot of families are still in poverty. We, we just getting it. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a developing economy. It's a yeah. brick, the bricks. Yeah. You know? yeah. So I listed here then the next like the five biggest cities in Cape Town or in Cape Town in South in Africa. South Africa. Mm -hmm. um, Cape Town is the largest, just barely, yeah. uh, with three point four million. Honestly, I think Cape Town, personally, in my opinion, is one of the most beautiful cities in the world. Mm -hmm. And look, the, this is the famous Table Mountain right here and uh, a crazy friend of mine and myself we actually got up early one morning and we hiked that whole thing it's not too high though. it's not but there are parts here where we had to climb like oh. like straight up like like oh, it was intense it was intense I mean but then we saw all the other tours taking the gondola up you know but uh, we it was totally worth it because there was a bunch of fog in the morning covering yeah. the whole city so we actually climbed up in the fog we were up above the fog and you looked out and it was just like it was just like clouds you were on top of the clouds and while we we're up there actually all of the fog blew out and then you could see the whole city mm -hmm. i loved that town but it felt i will be honest it felt uh i felt it felt more dangerous than johannesburg to me like on long street at night yeah like uh yeah, I had no problems in Johannesburg and Davidson in the township. But then again, all the tourists are there, and maybe the bad guys think, okay, hey, that's where we yeah. go to find the yeah. dumb tourists. You know, um, even most most gangs most gangs are in Cape Town. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, it's a uh, not surprised. gang infested city. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know anything about Durban. What can you tell me? Durban about that? is, I think, it's the largest. Yeah, it's the largest. You gotta talk um, to Wikipedia again, then, man. Yeah, <laughs> Durban is the largest. It's uh, it's in a province called KwaZulu Natal. KwaZulu Natal is where Shaka Zulu. I don't know if you know Shaka Zulu, but most uh, it's a Zulu. It's a Zulu type of uh, province. Most Zulus uh, live in uh, uh, Durban or KwaZulu Natal, and it's quite a beautiful city. Also, it's coastal. And uh, the water there is quite warm in, in, in the coast. It's warmer than in Cape Town. Mm -hmm. I prefer going to Durban uh -huh. than going to Cape Town. And we see like in, like in Australia that the two largest cities, well, they're both on the coast. Mm -hmm. In Australia, we had all the top five work. Um, hint, hint, Kahoot quiz, um, Cape Town is the largest. That might be a question Durban. that comes in. <laughs> Mahatma Gandhi also lived in Durban. Really? Yes. I did not know that. Johannesburg. Uh, the resolution on that's not as high as I'd like, but uh, like we said earlier, you know, who would have thought that this is a view in, in, in an African city? You know, uh, most people don't associate that with Africa, but um, yeah, I I had a great time in the suburbs of, of Johannesburg. That's where I, I I spent a lot of my time. I also went to the botanical gardens, the Walter Sisu. Yeah. Um, by far the most beautiful botanical garden I've ever seen in my life. Uh, Soweto, 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 Soweto. Yeah. That's where I got this. Oh yeah. Yes, <laughs> in Soweto. Uh, what, what, can you, what can you tell me about the towers there? Um, well, those the the towers were um, painted during the World Cup. If you can see, it's got mm -hmm. uh, that football fever. Mm -hmm. And now uh, they are being used as uh, bungee jumping for bungee jumping because um, they, yeah, I think it was an um, energy plant or something. Okay. ESCOM, ESCOM used to be there. Uh, it's, it's our parastatal for energy, uh, uh, 
and uh, now it's just a, a place for entertainment. There, have you been to the towers? Did you go to? The Drove by the towers. Oh, where right. I did go was the Mandela House. Oh, okay. Um, this was actually where Nelson Mandela used to live, and you can go and see where he, mm -hmm. he lived. Yeah, just before he got arrested uh, in, in the 60s, I think. Or in the 80s, yeah. And it was right down that street, and so I thought where uh, my, my dear friend Freddie uh, from Lesotho, mm -hmm. President Davidson, mm -hmm. uh, uh, who, uh, yeah, who got, me, uh, who got me this shirt. And then your hometown, huh? Yeah. Pretoria. It's actually the capital city. You know? uh, it's right next to Johannesburg. So it's like uh, Navopolosk and Polos. You know? mm -hmm. So it's, we call it Yakaranda. If you can see, uh, most of the trees, the, the theme of the city is with uh, purple trees. So walking, yeah, the, the Jacaranda tree. So it's quite a nice city. I think it's cleaner and safer than um, Johannesburg. Because Johannesburg, everyone in South Africa, just like he was saying, people from other African countries would like to live in South Africa. Everyone in South Africa would like to live in Johannesburg mm -hmm. or Pretoria. So it's, it's, a, it's the administrative capital. Uh, the president lives in the city. Uh, the, the president housing is, is, in a, is in Pretoria because most of in fact, all the embassies uh, are in Pretoria. So you can't leave. So what makes it special is that no matter where you are in the country, you can't, you can't get a visa to another country without coming to Pretoria. Hmm. Is it the official or capital? It's the official capital. Though we have three capitals. This is the administrative, which is the, the main capital because of the embassies and so forth. And, uh, we have Cape Town, Cape Town, which is the legislative, the parliament of South Africa is in, is in Cape Town. And then we have uh, a, ju a judicial capital, uh, which is in Bloemfontein, where all the laws are passed. So we have three capitals, but they're capitals with a, a purpose of something, not, not just a tourist attraction. Yeah. Different branches of government yeah. are located in different, in different provinces. Yeah, that is interesting. Mm -hmm. Huh. It's kind of difficult to talk about cooperate with it. It's difficult for. Um, it's difficult to co cooperate between the three capitals, yes. is it? No. Well, they're far off, but if you. Well, I'm from Pretoria, so everything is there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've got an idea. Mm -hmm. Because uh, sometimes so also has uh, some capitals, like US. It's New York, it's, it's the capital, yes. it's the uh, economic capital of uh, yes. the US, yes. and Washington is administrative. Mm -hmm. well, and yes. it's going to be represented because the Pretoria, like, <coughs> like I say, it's, uh, control, it, controls, it controls the most administrative rules, and others mm -hmm. uh, do it during their own work. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the World Cup, 2010. <laughs> This is yes. the first World Cup that I really got into. Oh, yeah. I was in Germany at the time. Um, I loved the song by Shakira. Um, <laughs> does anyone know that song? Yes. 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 Yeah? Yeah? Like you recognize this song? You remember this song? So what was it like in the World Cup time in 2010? What was it like then? Everyone was hyped up about it. And I think it helped the country develop a little bit faster than usual. It put us out there in the map because we're the first country, African country, to ever host the World Cup. And I doubt it. In my lifetime, the World Cup will ever go back to Africa. So it was quite an opportunity. It was quite a great experience. Um, having to be around the World Cup for a uh, sensation at that time. So we had quite a lot of tourists. So we, we had visitors in our houses, people that would have preferred to live in the house as opposed to hotels because at that time, I can imagine the rates were higher so that you know the, the country can at least uh, gain something out of it. But overall, it was a nice experience. Um, 
found white people going into taxis, which is a rarity in South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it was nice. Uh, I enjoyed I enjoyed the fever. I enjoyed having to meet uh, different people from different countries and just having fun in just one space, you know. Aren't you a football fan? Didn't you? I am. Uh, well, no. Nah. <laughs> I thought I thought I should actually work because we had fan parks. So outside the stadium, obviously, most most of the tickets were reserved for tourists, you know. So outside we'd have a fan park where uh, they'd um, uh, connect the big screen, big enough for people to view the the, the, the game from. So I was mostly in fan parks and just uh, socializing with people. <clears throat> it, do you know who's hosting the next World Cup? Russia. Russia, that's right. <laughs> I'm going to that one, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we have a friend also, Kingsley, from Nigeria. He didn't make it. Um, so, I, we're going to skip the Nigeria part. Uh, I would just, I did, a, I did a big project. I'll just, I'll talk just shortly about Nigeria. Um, I did a, a huge project in my, my uh, my university time on Nigeria, actually on Nollywood. What do you think Nollywood might be? Nollywood? It's the Hollywood of Nigeria. Yes. Yes, like Bollywood. And it takes it takes place in Lagos. Here, that's the Nollywood capital of Nigeria. It's also the most populated city in. Um, in Nigeria, the capital, Abuja. Abuja, is right in the middle of the country. Our friend is from uh, the region of Port Harcourt, but um, Lagos is the the most populated city and also the capital of the Nollywood and uh, industry, but also the economic powerhouse of Nigeria. Nigeria has the largest population in all of Africa. The most populated country in all of Africa with 187 million people. More people live in Nigeria than in Russia. Yes. Seventh largest country in the world and uh, 32nd largest in size. We see just under 100,000 square kilometers. It's about, it's four and a half times the size of Belarus. So Belarus, four and a half times, but my goodness, 187 million people. A lot of people. And um, uh, most, you know, like I said, uh, Lagos is the most populated capital of city, uh, most populated city in the country, and you see views like this. I mean, this could be, this could be Portugal, you know, this could be uh, any Western European country. And uh, you see a lot of development in Nigeria, a lot of different businesses, and uh, I think, I just hope that you can go home from this presentation today realizing that, okay, it's not just lions and giraffes and safaris and bush people in Africa. That, uh, you know, just like, I mean, we have wilderness, just like in Russia, you've got great wilderness in the Far East and in Siberia and the northern part of Krasnoyarsky Krai and stuff, but you've also got places like Moscow and St. Petersburg and, and Vladivostok, you know, it's like, Completely different than from uh, uh, what would, you would see in the the, the, the tundra of, of Russia. So um, yeah, uh, Nigeria, La Lagos uh, is by far the place to be economically and uh, socially within Nigeria. Um, so yeah, in Nigeria, the largest, the seventh largest country in the world, and largest uh, in population, and largest uh, country in Africa in population. So we have a Kahoot quiz. Um, I'll just, we'll see what that is here shortly. But before we start that, I just want to say thank you to you again for coming all the way from Old Pools today to talk with my uh, with my students here. And uh, <laughs> yeah, my students. It's been no, it's really it's been a real pleasure. So thank you very much. I've made some last minute changes to the uh, curriculum or pl the plan. Next week we're going to talk about great American landmarks. And moving that one up a little bit. Uh, I didn't plan on having a presentation next week, but I am going to be here after all. So next week is Great American Landmarks Across the United States. We have a Kahoot quiz. I know a lot of you love the Kahoot quiz. So 
We'll do our 10 question Kahoot quiz. I think you'll find this interesting. What two countries share a border with Victoria Falls? Zambia and Zimbabwe. The Zambezi is the river. Zimbabwe is the country next to it. Our winner is... Juliana! So, in terms... Mold, yes. In terms of, in terms of the season right now, it's spring. Uh, when I was traveling in Bulgaria, a Bulgarian, uh, my Bulgarian friend's mom gave me a bunch of these, and these are symbols of spring in Bulgaria. And when you see your first sight of spring, like the beautiful weather we had today, you're supposed to take this and put this onto the wrist of your friends. So please, your Bulgarian charm, spring charm, that's for you. Thanks. Well done. So. Thank you, everyone, and uh, thank you again to our guests, Trust for all coming all the way out here. I really appreciate it. Yeah, um, we really loved having you here, and you gave much more insight into South Africa than I ever could. So, thank you so much. Thank you. Great. Next week, uh, American landmarks. Yes, beautiful natural sites across the United States, natural and man-made. And uh, we got Yale still. Oh, you just wait till next week, buddy, okay? <laughs> I'm sure you'll know a lot of them, okay? So, thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you next week.